All right, we are back, and it is Thursday, and we are here with Bose today, uh, with Craig and Will. What's going on, guys? Hey, John. Hi. Awesome. Well, hey, I uh, really appreciate you guys joining me here, and, um, you know, I wish we could be hanging out in uh, Southern California, of course, <laughs> but uh, here we are, and um, yeah, we're going to show off some really cool products uh, with the family of the L1 Pro system, so... Uh, yeah, Craig, if you want to go ahead and just jump right into um, kind of like a family overview, uh, that'd be awesome. Yeah, cool. So we've got, um, I got the whole family behind me here. Let me just position my laptop so we can see. Um, from uh, left, yeah, your left side of the screen, we've got the L1 Pro 8, um, which is our replacement for the L1 Compact. And we've got the L1 Pro 16, replacement for the L1S, for the B1 base module. Then we've got the L1 Pro 32, which is the replacement for the Model 2. And then that can be paired with either the Sub 2 or the Sub 1. Uh, replacements for the B1 and B2 base modules, respectively. Um, we start off with the most portable systems, um, although every single system is extremely portable. Um, so we go from uh, most portable to least portable, and then most performance to uh, beginning level performance, let's say. But we have upgrades across the board compared to our legacy systems uh, in terms of portability and the performance uh, and just in terms of ease of use for the completely redesigned IO, Bluetooth capability, additional drivers and the mid high arrays, uh, completely reimagined subwoofers, um, and then obviously a whole new industrial design. Awesome, man. Yeah, I know it's, and it's been a while since, um, cause you guys have had like the legacy family for uh, how many years now? 17 years was 17 the, years was when the original um model one we call it now uh appeared in the market with this giant sort of like sometimes we call it the spatula spatula handle <laughs> uh, the base but that's been around for a while and um, the last upgrade we made to the to the family was um in 2012. Mm -hmm. so it's you know it's a category that we created at bose um, when these came out they were really unusual form factor um the public hadn't seen anything like this. And so we did a lot of work to try to convince folks that, hey, this thing actually does work and it worked really, really well. Uh, bringing something totally new to the table in terms of horizontal coverage, where you can literally cover 180 degrees of a space thanks mm -hmm. to the articulated arrays, that are in, um, the articulated drivers in the high arrays. Um, and then with um, varying degrees of horizontal, uh, vertical control, on an L1 Pro 8, for example, we've got um, we've got a C-shape array with eight drivers, so that gives us about 40 degrees of vertical control. Mm -hmm. But for being on an elevated stage, also can be on the floor, um, on a firing up at your audience. Could also work for a rake feeding if that's what your venue has. The L1 Pro 16 has 16 drivers in its mid-high array. That is in a J-shaped configuration, um, so also good for an elevated stage for the team that'll fire down to the audience, but if you're being on the floor as well. Then the L1 Pro 32 has, you guessed it, 32 drivers in the high array from ceiling to floor in a straight line array with really tight vertical control. What that gives us is propagation of sound uh, over a long distance, so it has a really good throw over distance. It's great for really large spaces as well as outdoor venues as well. And um, Will, who is our, our other guest, uh, has been sort of a partner with Bose for, for a few years now. So, Will has used every single one of our legacy systems, and he's a, he's part of our user groups, our uh, groups of singer songwriters and mobile DJs who we talk to um, while we're in the, in the development cycle, and uh, we talk to these folks and we ask them what's important to them. We let them hear things, we let them play through things. So Will has um, lots of really good context with legacy systems as well as his new systems. And Will, you also. Um, we're one of our beta testers, so we've got to test every single one of these units, and I've probably some of the most experience in the world of, uh, when it comes to using these new pro systems. Yeah, and uh, you know, I've used like the legacy system, the L1 with the wide base and the legs coming out and everything like that for a long time in all kinds of situations, and the you know, setting up in someone's house situation to it's in the van. And you're using these um, outdoors, indoors, and all kinds of venues. And when first testing this line out, I thought, well, 
Is it just the repackaging the same thing, but it really kind of overshoots what you thought what you could even expect from a PA. And it was kind of um, baffling just watching the process and watching these things come to life. Um, and it really, it's a really it makes a big difference as a performer. And the sound is incredible, of course. But the biggest difference, I would say, is just ease of use, which you, you come to expect from Bose and from Bose Pro products. But um, at the first gig I had with one of these, it was one trip to my car in you know, into the venue and out at the end, which, which everyone knows if you're performing, that's, that's a big deal. Oh yeah. 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 Loading in and out is, I, you know, I miss it at this point. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like I, you know, I, I would do anything to, to carry, you know, a bunch of, bunch of gear into a venue, but, uh, that's how musicians get exercise. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But no, I feel like with the, um, yeah, with with the, like the L1 Pro and just the L1 family in general, it really took a lot of that heavy heavy lifting out of the equation, um, which honestly can can kind of you know it can be dangerous. I know I know I've like I've hurt my back. I'm 31 years old and I, I've hurt my back lifting amps and cabs and you know all kinds of equipment. Uh, so if you're on the road, I mean the last thing you want to do is to you know lug a hundred pounds of gear you know <laughs> everywhere with you. Right. Right. So, I mean, this, um, it also, you think with making things easier to transport, uh, it, you, you lose something, but it's, um, it's really intense what you gain, um, sound wise with this, with, with these, this new line. And, um, it, <laughs> I remember testing, I remember testing and someone's like, it's almost like you're trying to, humiliate your own product by making these so good because you you test them next to the old ones and the old ones are were amazing and you thought where could these go go from here sound wise and um this this line really takes everything into a new a new level um like craig was saying the l1 series introduced a way of having a pa in this really slim format not taking up a lot of foot space on your stage which is huge also and then everyone's still doing it. And I think this this new product just kind of, again, sets the pace of where we need to be for live sound. Totally. And I, th I think people are, are really pleasantly surprised when they hear the L1 for the first time. Yeah. Even. And, you know, maybe they haven't even heard the Pro yet, which they're, you know, they're in for a surprise there. But um, how would you say, like, say someone has like a pair of, um, like 12 inch, uh, PA speakers, how does this compare kind of in, in volume level or, or gig size? Well, it depends on the, on the power of your, of your, the PA system. Um, but if you were to compare, so like traditional PA speakers are, it's a point source versus a line source. Mm -hmm. Um, a line source is basically all these drivers working they're coupled together to work as one unit to propagate sound from from the speaker to the other end of the room, uh, much like um, like an actual line array. Let me show you from one of our uh, oh, yeah. arena systems up there. So, so basically, what you've got in in the mid high array is is a mini version of that, and so that they're working together to propagate sound further. And it's just it's more efficient for a couple of reasons. One, um, you get more drop less drop off over distance, so you're able to mm -hmm. fill larger spaces, mm -hmm. and you also don't have to work as hard at the source. A point source. Speaker, for example, you typically will you'll lose 6 dB every time you double the distance. Whereas a line source speaker, the Bose L1 Pro systems, you lose 3 dB every time you double the distance. So we're just able to to make the sound travel further. And if you're a mobile DJ <clears throat> or a band, um, how does it affect your performance if you're not a, if you don't need to have the volume source being loud at the source? You, you you're more resistant to feedback when you have microphones close to the mid high array. And also, if you're a DJ, you can have I can have conversations right here, right in the systems. Mm -hmm. um, that's not completely crushing crushing your guest ears. Yeah, definitely. And I think um, you know when it comes to um, you know perf like a performer, they are so used to having a left and a right, but you don't you don't necessarily need a left and a right of the line array systems. You can kind of just use one, or or how would you kind of what's the angle? I guess that it kind of um, projects out it. 
lots of mobile DJs buy two systems because mm -hmm. they like to have the left and right coming out of their DJ console. Mm -hmm. Most recorded music was mixed was mixed in stereo, so yeah. they have they have things that you're only going to hear on the right and things that you're only going to hear on the left. Things panned to the center. Um, but for singer songwriters, it's um, the original concept of an L1 was sort of like an amplification of the self, like one unit per person. I can adjust my own volume level, my own EQ. Mm -hmm. um, I can hear the music as as I want the audience to hear it, and as I want my bandmates to to hear it. Mm -hmm. So um, we we don't hear like in stereo naturally. So thus the L1 makes total sense, right? It's it's how I would normally hear myself singing, but louder. It's how normally I hear my acoustic guitar, but louder. Mm -hmm. um, but still, you can get like a T4 or T8 and run a couple of systems in stereo or any mixer for that matter. Nice. So with the L1 Pro, um, so you said the last release, I think, was 2012. So this has been about eight years. Um, what are some of like kind of the main differences? So if people are familiar with the, um, you know, the older model, what will they see that's new on the Pro? Yeah. So with, with the L1 Pro 8, um, we've got eight drivers in the mid-high array versus six in the compact. Mm -hmm. um, we're about 6 dB louder. Um, so the L1 compact was uh, about 112 dB versus uh, 118 dB of the L1 compact. We're also tuned much lower. We go down to 45 hertz as opposed to 65 hertz on a compact. And uh, we've got a lower crossover point, uh, which is about 200 hertz. So what that means is you're going to hear frequencies, uh, kick drum, bass guitar, and keyboard parts coming out of your subwoofer, and then everything else is going to come out of an entire array. Um, you're going to hear a real separation of those frequencies, so you're not going to hear sometimes if kick drum kind of bleeds up into the array or vocal come out of your subwoofer. It's uh, Sonically, it's not ideal, um, but what we get is this really nice vocal clarity and instrument separation. So you're really hearing, you're listening to music that you've listened to for, you know, all your life, typically, you listen to something through these L1 Pro systems for the first time, and it's you're hearing things that you've never heard before in the recorded music. Um, and if you're in a band situation or duo or trio situation, you're really able to kind of separate every single instrument. Mm -hmm. With the L1 Pro 16, um, we compare that to the to the L1 S model. We've got 16 drivers in the mid high array versus 12 in the one S. Um, we do have that J shape, as I mentioned, but we have more options when it comes to placement of the unit. Um, we are considerably louder at 124 dB peak versus 118 of a 1F. And then we're tuned to uh, 42 Hertz, which is about the same as a as a, uh, as a a B1. I think technically the B1 UK goes down to 40 Hertz. But um, the volume, the mass, the, the punch that you're hearing out of this 10 by 18 inch racetrack, um, and I did skip over the by 13 inch racetrack that is in the L1 Pro 8. Um, what that is, it's it's a it's an oval with parallel sides. So it's so instead of using a traditional round driver, using these racetrack drivers so that we can get basically a smaller footprint stage. Imagine that you took if you took a round driver and kind of stretched it out and you had the same speaker cone surface area, we're able to get um, lots of lots of punch, lots of low low end frequency extension, but in a smaller footprint. So it's easier to carry, you've got a better center of gravity takes up less space on stage. Um, and then just to go back to your original question, John, uh, comparing the L1 Pro 32 to a Model 2, Model 2 had 24 drivers in a straight uh, articulated array versus 32 mm -hmm. of the L1 Pro 32. Um, not compared with the Sub 2 or the Sub 1, which use the same 10 by 18 or a 7 by 13 inch drivers respectively. Uh, the subs are uh, they're powered by themselves, unlike the B1, B2, or the Passive. Um, they, they have a little bit more acoustic volume than the, uh, than the Little Brothers, so we're able to tune those a little bit lower. Down to 37 hertz for the sub-2, and down to 40 hertz for the sub-1. Awesome. Um, and then and then there's IO, which is completely reimagined. Nice. Yeah, did you want to kind of uh, talk about that for a second? Sure. I'm going to grab my laptop and we'll just go behind the system here. Um, and we can kind of dovetail. So here we've got the back of an L1 Pro 8. Mm -hmm. um, you can see we've got clear channel delineation. We've got channel one, two, three. And I should add that all these IOs are the exact same on every single system. So we've got here's the Pro 8. 
Here's the Pro 16. And then here's the Pro 32 on that very compact but sturdy power stand. Mm -hmm. So uh, sort of the main control um, mechanism is this rotary encoder. So I can select volume, treble, bass, and reverb just by pressing the button. And you can see those LEDs kind of change their position <clears throat> as I scroll through the parameter. So if I want to turn my reverb down or up, so each parameter is clearly indicated. Uh, same thing on channel two. Channel three is the same minus the reverb control. Um, we've got channel mutes on all three channels. Uh, we've got tone match presets, which are a dynamic handheld microphone and a piezo acoustic guitar on channels one and two, in addition to phantom power, um, combo input jacks for quarter inch or XLR. And then channel three is our Bluetooth streaming channel, but you can also connect a quarter inch mono or uh, 3.5 millimeter stereo summed. System EQ, which is a house curve that uh, is a is a slight EQ that's placed over the master. Um, optimized for live music, for recorded music if you're a mobile DJ, mm -hmm. and then also for public speaking if you're um, using it for those events. Full bandwidth line out. Uh, tone match port for powering your T4 or T8 mixer. And then there's also a USB port for making firmware upgrades. And while I'm here, um, the L1 Mix app, which I have synced to this L8, um, will always be in sync with your L1 Pro system. So you can see oh, wow. as, I, as, I, as I hit the volume, as I hit the, the, the encoder here, I can scroll through the parameters. I turn my volume up, see it move up on the product, yeah. turn it down, see it move. Um, so I, there's nothing I can't access in the L1 Mix app that I can't access on the product. And in addition, but wait, there's more. Um, so Tone Match is a, uh, a really powerful uh, library of presets that we developed that work with our Tone Match mixers. It allows you to optimize for specific pieces of gear. So let's say I have a, uh, an Audix OM2 microphone. I can go into my Tone Match settings page on the L1 Mix, select channel one, select the microphone bank, and then I select the Audix folder, and I select OM2. You're going to see this LED on the product change to green. Mm -hmm. So now every time I select that microphone preset, it's going to be optimized for my Audix OM2. Um, so if you're not familiar with our Tone Match library, um, it's a really powerful engine. We've worked with lots of manufacturers um, as well as developed our own Tone Match presets mm -hmm. for lots of pieces of gear out there in the market. Yeah, that's awesome. Because I mean, the cool thing about this system too is it's so versatile with so many different applications. Um, and I wanted to go back to you, Will, and kind of pick your brain on how you've been using this system over the years and, um, you know, what, what kind of use, you know, you're personally kind of uh, getting out of them. Yeah. Um, like I said, I've used them in every situation from a house concert to an outdoor, you know, concert that you're setting up, that you're in charge of the sound. Mm -hmm. I've used them supplementally as side wedges. Mm -hmm. um, side fills on, on, a, on a large stage if I'm traveling so I'll, I'll often have those gear with me um, in the van and especially since now there's such a focus on space and fitting it in and, and transport mm -hmm. um, this this family of uh, L1 Pro really just kind of knocked out of the park as far as that goes um, totally and you know, when you mix all this, when you when you're when you're buying gear, when you're an artist, when you're a musician, when you're a performer, and you're buying gear, you're making an investment in yourself and in the way you want to present yourself. And we always weigh these things heavily. Like, is this thing going to make my 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 show better? Is it going to make me connecting with people better? And and what else does it bring? Because often it's it's on us to just make it better. We can get rid of all our gear have to walk out into an empty theater and still <laughs> have to do it if all the power died. You know, you still have to entertain yeah. the crowd. Mm -hmm. That's honest, like down to our core. So when we when we buy a piece of gear, we're often weighing what is it exactly that is going to improve my connection to the audience. And I think this line knocked out of the park with the sonics and the portability. <laughs> like this added thing where 
you know, I had the I had the L8 for a couple like a couple months mm-hmm. and used it in some backyard concerts when I was playing solo, just like ten people, right? It was my family during when we were really locked down in the spring, and um. All of a sudden, I had the best Bluetooth speaker you could imagine when I wasn't playing. It yeah. really, it really stretched out. It's like, mm-hmm. and then I just had it in, in my home studio here. I just had, I left it set up and listened to music on it all day when I wasn't playing through it. Oh yeah, just little things like that. Um, you know, when you buy a PA five years ago, you weren't thinking, "I'll just leave this set up all the time because it's the best stereo I have now because <laughs> Bluetooth connecting to everything." Yeah, um, and that transfers into the ease of use when you're performing because um i did a solo show on a on a 32 i was playing electric guitar i like to play electric guitar solo often mm-hmm. so i had kind of a, an amp pedal that i was running through the the, L, the pro 32 and my vocal mic which i used the tone match for an sm38 l58 and and I had the app up, and I'm controlling everything from a little from the mic stand. I could bring, I could mute the reverb while I'm talking to the audience, and then taking breaks, you just swipe up, put on whatever application you want for music, and it's going through the PA like that. Yeah. Um, so you really just vertically integrated in your whole, whole musical life, and I think that. I go back to being an artist and every investment matters. Um, and um, it just kind of fits into your life in so many ways. Definitely. And I think as a, as an artist that really prioritizes, you know, just, you know, high fidelity, you know, the best sound you can get. Um, you know, I feel like there's a lot of people that are always on the search for that. So, um, you know, unfortunately we, we can't hear this in person right now, but uh, I'm so excited to hear it, but then also at the same time, I'm like, is that is that going to be it? <laughs> like, am I never going to find anything that's better than this? Like you mentioned before, yeah. um, you know. But I'm I'm sure down the line, uh, you guys will those. But uh, for now, I feel like you know, if you're looking for like the best of the best sound quality in these types of systems, I mean, you guys really paid the road for this kind of stuff too. So, um, you know, it makes sense, uh, you know, for you guys to keep kind of setting the bar. Uh, but yeah, I I mean. I really dig the Bose stuff. I mean, I listen to Bose speakers all across the board from little Bluetooth speakers to, um, you know, more uh, PA kind of focus style speakers. So uh, you guys are just known for having great sound. Thanks, John. um, Just to just a tip of the hat to the Bose legacy products. Like we we had a great start, obviously, because those products sound amazing. Mm -hmm. But we also had like a really high bar. because we have to improve these products that have just sort of been like the benchmark for, for many years. And yeah. fast forward to today, there's, there are other manufacturers of portable line arrays. We, back then there was no competition today. There are other manufacturers. Um, so we, when we were listening to these systems and developing these systems, we were, we, we listened every single day, constantly a being, we didn't want to just like come out of nowhere with this new Bose L1 sound. We really wanted to maintain that, Kind of sonic footprint of the legacy systems because there are so many users out there that that love how these things sound and we love how they sound so we like to think of it as like that signature sound but just really dialed up all across the board so you know we're not uh we're not just giving you more low end we're giving you more low end that same present mid-range and also more high end as well so you're, mm-hmm. you're getting the full frequency uh spectrum yeah i was gonna say i mean it it just shows with the amount of time that you guys have put in, you know, in developing this system, you know, it's not like you're, you know, here's a, here's a new model, uh, every year, you know, uh, you really take the time to, like you said, you probably listen to it, you know, every day for how many, you know, however long you're developing the product for. Um, and I think that's just a really good reminder to people that you guys are in it to create, you know, the best Sonic experience you can get not just saying like, Hey, yeah, I'm going to increase the load and then boom, here's a new model. So, right. Yeah. It's like without those sonic improvements, why, why do it, it has to sound absolutely amazing. And along the way, the portability story is also equally important because, um, it, Will was talking about like 
setting it up and doing these these small shows and just what an amazing time system he had. The shows, it's funny, like just putting the musician hat on for a sec, mm-hmm. the gigs where you have to go and bring your own PA and set up your own PA. Um, sometimes while you're setting up all that gear, I ask myself, why do I do this? Because mm. it's it's so stressful. Yeah. And then, you know, halfway in the song one, you're like, oh, this is why I do this because it's really fun and mm-hmm. I love it. But with with the systems, we've really we kind of removed that. Um, I'll say that we removed the anxiety of setting up, which is not entirely true because you still have this little these anxious moments when you're setting up for a gig. But we have made it as easy as possible for you to set this thing up and get to sounding great like immediately. Yeah. Um, like scene scene saving is a, a thing with the L1 Mix app that I didn't point out. Mm-hmm. You if you're playing a particular venue a couple times a month. You can save that scene, we call it. So it's all your EQ settings and your tone match settings. And then the next time I play that venue, I simply recall that scene and I'm, I'm ready to go. Yeah, that's awesome. I think <laughs> you made a really good point there, like making it easier to set up. I mean, I've played in um, you know some DIY bands over the years, and I remember going on tours and playing house shows. Um, and if anyone has played house shows, um, you know what the nightmare it can be. <laughs> Um, you know, with the PA system, you don't know what you're going to walk right. into. Um, exactly. I think, I think one time I did vocals like out of a, like a, like a solid state guitar amp. I'm not even kidding because <laughs> the PA Beautiful. system, you know, wasn't working. Um, so yeah, I mean, making it easier. I mean, that's, that's incredible. So, I mean, it, it really does take a lot of anxiety out of the setup because not only yeah. are you worrying about performing, but you want to make sure everything's working. Yeah, as an artist, you just you want that confidence that everything is going to sound as good as it possibly can, mm-hmm. and you want to just you want to focus all of that anxiety to um, to just to playing the best gig you can, you know, connecting with your audience. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, and there's also being late for gigs, and if you have an easy setup and like the scenes are already created for you, because with because with the tone match you can have your scene already created and ready to go. So you you know you can hit that traffic and still make it to your gig and be like, it's all right, I'm gonna set yeah. up real quick. And also yeah. the floor space on these on all these units, like that matters too. Because sometimes, like you say, you have a house concert, maybe people are right up on top of you. You know, they can get back there again soon. But um, that stuff matters too. And the in the floor space and the base of like the L L thirty two, which just doesn't take up a lot of space on your stage at all. So there's more room for performance and more room for you know crowding around and stuff like that. Awesome. Yeah. It, um, as Will was talking about the L32, I just wanted to highlight like the significant weight reduction of the L1 Pro 32 versus a Model 2. Um, we're, we're so much lighter, so much narrower. Um, we're actually 60% lighter than a Model 2, which is how we can have this um, really narrow power stand. Uh, still meets all of our horizontal force requirements, which means that if somebody comes over and meets on the system, it's, it's not going to tip over. Um, and then Base modules, you know, this with a racetrack driver, like I'm basically carrying a 15 inch sub right here, um, but it's it's configured so that it's it's easy enough for me to sit in the back seat of my car and bring it to the vehicle from the vehicle to the venue in a single trip. Um, I don't need two people to carry it. Probably not going to break my back. But, you know, see it. Say that. See, while you were setting all that up, I just thought you had like superhuman strength. <laughs> yeah, well, I am really strong, John. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that that's awesome, and you know, it goes back to like we've said too, and I'm sure people have said a million times. It's like some of the worst part about playing a show is the the load in, the load out. Definitely can can zap a little bit of fun from the gig. <laughs> Definitely. Well, cool. Um, let's see here. So, was there? Um, did you want to go over any any more of the app control? I know that's like a really cool feature that you guys have. Um, but you know, you kind of showed the, the ease of it and, um, you know, and how it, how the interface looks and everything like that. Yeah. The idea uh, I'll let Will chime in cause he's, he's used it a bunch. Mm-hmm. Um, but the idea is basically it's the mixer that's in your pocket. So, so there's no, uh, you know, awkward moment where you're walking over to your PA system to make adjustments in between, in between songs, you can mute your reverb remotely. So if you want to address the crowd without your your uh, address being drenched in reverb, uh, and just keep it keep it real simple. You know, it looks like the I/O. You do everything the same way that you do do on the I/O. So there's no there's no learning curve, and you're always in sync. You can control multiple units. So if I had 
I had a couple of units, I can I can just select which unit I want to control and just and, uh, make adjustments to that unit. Anything you want to add, Will? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not an exaggeration to say, like, the amount of time it would take to set up if you're the pro L8 and you're a solo performer, the amount of time to set up pretty much is the walk from the car to the stage. Because you, you pop it out, you get it in the base, you plug in your mic, your app is going to be ready to go from your last gig and have the settings that you like and the tone match that you like to the mic you're using. Um, it's, it's really um, strange to be able to, for things to be that easy. And it, at first, when you start, when you start performing with these, it's going to be weird to have that extra time, <laughs> you know, <laughs> to have that extra ease and like that. Like Craig was saying, that that absence of stress. Um, but man, it's so nice when you're going to perform and you don't have that kind of thing. Uh, and but a dual performer, a jazz trio with a um, an L16, um, uh, you know, a, an acoustic type band with an L16. I mean, L16 is is loud. It's it's really powerful, um, and that's just as fast too. So. Uh, that's that's the added bonus of having it on your phone too, because you're not. It's easy to go to the back of the system and look, and do it that way. We're all used to like, you know, having a mixer somewhere if you're doing your own gig and you're you play a gig. You got to go over, you bring up a fade or whatever, or you go to the back of the system and you look. But now there, there'll be no difference between just, you know, saying thank you, quickly like maybe your phone's. In your pocket, if you have to do it in your pocket, or it's maybe you have an attachment to your mic stand if you're performing, um, or someone in the band has control of it somewhere. It's 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 in motion with your show. It doesn't interrupt the flow. It doesn't again. It doesn't interrupt your connection to to the audience and to everyone else. I remember this summer, Will. You had texted me after a gig that you'd done, and you said that you felt guilty. You felt like you forgot something after you after you loaded out after having the L32. Dude, that was it. I just felt like it was way too easy. I felt like I must have forgotten something there. Um, and uh, yeah, breakdown in putting everything away is just is so strange. It's so strange. That's so funny. I, I know that feeling. And yeah. <laughs> you're like, like, all right, so I got all my cables, you know, I got all this and, and that. And, you know, before you know it, you, know, you, you get back and it's been like a week since your gig and you're like, well, there goes that thing. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. This is just a matter of like, it, it only took me five minutes to break this down and put it in my car. And now I'm just chilling, hanging out and relaxing. I must've forgot something. I must've done something wrong. You know? Yeah. It's not a feeling that, you know, most musicians are, are used to. Right. <laughs> Definitely. Well, cool guys. Uh, anything yeah. else you wanted to highlight, uh, Craig or will or, you guys definitely covered, you know, a good amount of, um, you know, kind of what the new features are and how they differ from uh, some of the previous models. Uh, but was there anything you wanted to add to that? Uh, there's lots of information available at pro.bose.com. Go there to learn basically anything you want to know about the systems. Um, there's lots of content on our YouTube channel as well. Um, check it out. Yeah. And it's just a matter of time before, uh, you know, everyone that's watching this is here in this thing in person. So, uh, you know, when we can get out the gig, I'll be the first one there. So, yeah, I, I have a feeling that we're about to experience the roaring twenties, like all over again. You know what? That's what, that's Fast what my dad forward. was saying. He was like, he's like, you know, I think we're going to have another roaring twenties. And I was like, I wasn't there, but you know, I, I, <laughs> I'm like, I hope it's just as cool. So. But uh, Same. All right, alrighty, guys, um, have a great rest of your day. And thanks again for joining us here. And, uh, you know, you guys are just so awesome to work with and make such great products. And sorry, I can't, you know, be there with you in person to, to check it out. But, uh, you know, we'll have our time sometime in the future. So, well, thanks very much for having us, John. It's been a pleasure. Appreciate yeah. it. Totally. Alrighty. Thank and you. everyone watching, thank you for watching. And uh, feel free to hit that link that's featured for the stream here. Uh, and that'll take you to the whole um, L1 Pro family at zounds.com. Awesome. All righty. Cool. See you guys. See you.